Our next speaker is Be Betsy Harbert. She's a vegetation ecologist, also for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. She's worked as a vegetation and restoration ecologist for NGOs such in the Army Corps and the Colorado State University and has an MS in ecology from Colorado State University, Fort Collins. Her work has focused on wetland plant communities and environmental drivers for their of their comp composition and distribution. Currently, she works to update California vegetation classification and build protocols for statewide vegetation monitoring. Her title for her talk is Updated Vegetation Concepts for the Northern California Coast Ranges and the Modoc Plateau. Please welcome Betsy. Okay, I'm gonna get oriented here. Thank you. All right, um, my name is Betsy, and um, I'll be talking about uh, two of the projects that Rochelle mentioned in the Northern California Coast Ranges and the Modoc Plateau. Oh, it's the big green button. All right. Um, so you learned what veg camp, who Veg Camp is, um, but we just to touch on that again. We develop and maintain California's uh, state classification system. So we define and describe natural, ve natural vegetation types found in the state. And we also work to create fine scale vegetation maps, as well as determine rarity or sensitiv sensitivity of these natural communities. So um, I'm gonna be talking about new vegetation concepts and there's some jargon I just wanna get off, uh, make sure we're on the same page. Um, Natural communities are repeating patterns of plant species assemblages across the landscape. Um, we talk about those units at the alliance and association um, level. This is the finest scale that we talk about these concepts and that's what we rate sensitivity and how we define our vegetation concepts. So if I'm saying vegetation or natural communities, I'm talking about alliances and associations here for this talk. And an alliance is, you can think of it, of it sort of at the genus species scale. You would be thinking about an oak woodland, say, at the alliance level. And once you get to the association level, you're starting to think about what's happening in the understory or what might be co-dominating with those blue oak woodlands. Um, say you have an herbaceous um, understory, that would be an association level of the blue oak alliance. Oh, gosh. All right, so just some background. Um, the funding that uh, Rochelle mentioned um, in 2021, um, we received funding from the uh, California state budget um, to assist in um, helping the state reach its 30 by 30 goal, which is conserving 30% of our lands and coastal waterways by 2030. Um, vegetation sampling and mapping is a critical data set for achieving this goal by informing conservation priorities and establishing the means to monitor and manage critical ecosystems. Veg camps identified the North Coast and Modoc as high priority areas, um, and we'll go more into that um, when we get into the North Coast and the Modoc. Because I'm gonna be talking about um, new alliance and association concepts, I at least want to quickly talk about our statistical process and defining those things. Um, our um, Processes, again, those relevé rapid assessment protocols are analyzed using a multivariate analysis called hierarchical agglomerative cluster analysis. And that puts out this pretty, oops, um, dendrogram is what it's called. There's plots running down the left side and those are clustered based on similarity in species composition. Um, and you can see it starts at a fine scale and makes broader and broader groups and those can be um, cut at any point, so we use a secondary analysis called indicator species analysis to determine the level of grouping we want to use in defining our alliances and associations. And this second um, part of the slide is a zoom in of those groupings and how we go about naming an alliances and associations based on the composition of those groups. If you guys want, have any questions about that, Rochelle and I are happy to answer them, but that's about all I'll go into here. All right, so I'm gonna be talking about new concepts for the North Coast and MODOC. Um, I was gonna be presenting um, with my colleague, Jamie, but she's out, so um, bear with me as I go through the MODOC slides. I'm gonna be re reading her notes, so um, we'll get through it. There's lots of pretty pictures. Um, 
the North Coast and Coast Ranges have high priority habitat and migration corridors for big game species. In this case, um, the project area encompasses the entire range of Roosevelt elk in California. It's also a highly productive timber area. In addition, coastal vegetation communities are threatened by climate change, um, as well as sea level rise and decreased uh, summer fog. The data collected, so this is the why, why we identified it as a high priority area. Um, there's two aspects of this project. The purple line that you see is the sampling boundary, and that's what we use to develop the regional classification samples from that area. And then the, the green boundary is the mapping part of this project. That's 1.16 million acres mapping. And I wanted to mention just in general, the sampling area covers portions of Del Norte County, Humboldt, and Mendocino counties. We had funding not only from state legislation, but also from CAL FIRE and state parks to complete the sampling. Um, and we're working with Tuckman Geospatial, Aerial Information Systems, and CNPS for this work. We finished the sampling phase. That was for the last two years. We have over 2,600 samples done, and a lot of that was done um, by CNPS volunteers, so a shout out to them. Um, and also uh, CNPS is a contractor, so about 1,700 samples from them and 900 from CDFW. And as Rochelle mentioned, we have a new RFP that's gonna build on the classification um, to, to map the rest of the North Coast ecoregion. Where we're at, there's a preliminary classification um, for the North Coast that we've used for mapping. That's where I'm gonna be presenting most of these new concepts from. Um, we've wrapped up sampling, so we're, I'm incorporating that new data into a final classification that'll be um, delivered in 2026 along with a map. But if you have any questions, feel free to email me and I'll tell you where we're at. All right, some major drivers of vegetation in the North Coast. Um, it's very diverse for numerous reasons, including its temperate Mediterranean climate and cool wet winters along with cool summers along the coast. Fog delivers moisture during the summer, which is critical for vegetation such as Sitka spruce and redwoods. Salt spray and brackish water along the coast creates its own harsh environment that plant species have adapted to. I'll be talking about some of those types. Um, the topography of the coastal mountains interacts with the climate, creating a temperature and moisture gradient um, to the east and in, in elevations above the fog zone. These hotter and drier summers shift the forests to Doug fir, tan oak, along with stands of Oregon white oak and black oak. Um, plate tectonics in the area have exposed a variety of substrates in the coastal ranges, including serpentine, ultramafic, and other nutrient-poor soils. Um, and we'll be talking about some of those um, vegetation types that occur in those areas too. That's in that right corner. I do wanna, did I mention? Oh, it's the next slide. So getting into some of these new types, the meat of the talk, um, we have sampled a number of Pinus contorta, subspecies contorta, or shore pine um, stands. We have 19 stands in total, and this is sort of a teaser. We haven't vetted the types, but there will likely be new associations as a result um, of this sampling. We find these in interdunal areas and stabilized back dunes. Um, the Cascara buckthorn is a new association for the state. Uh, we found that along coastal bluffs. Uh, we have six samples. It's typically co-occurring with silk tassel bush, Pacific blackberry, and ocean spray. Um, we also have some, pi we sampled a lot of Picea sachensis, and I'm gonna go in more, into more detail um, of a wetland, a new wetland alliance for the state. Um, and I just wanna briefly touch on redwood. We have over 300 samples of redwood stands. Um, I don't have anything to present on it yet, but there will be, I imagine, a, a very thorough examination of associations for redwoods that I'm excited to present hopefully in the future. But that's a lot of samples for redwoods. Okay, so Sitka spruce. We have a new alliance that's found in areas of high groundwater and surface water availability throughout the year. Um, Sitka spruce has a pretty limited range in, in California, so it's exciting to have a, a new alliance that's associated with uh, wetlands. Typically, these stands um, that we sampled, there's two associations I should mention. I'm gonna talk about the first one, which typically has an overstory of Sitka spruce with an understory of salmon berry, western skunk cabbage, and sluice edge. We have 19 of these stands sampled. 
We see a cluster of them in the Crescent City area in the large alluvial outwash plain of the Smith River. We're also seeing them in dune deflation basins. Um, the, one, the photo to the left is one of those deflation basins. And we also see them um, in drainages at the foot of the coastal range. Um, here in that left, there's a, uh, an example of that in that left photo. Um, and sometimes western hemlock becomes an important co component of the overstory in those areas. The other association, which is a preliminary association within this swamp alliance, is um, Thuya placata, or western red cedar. Um, we have only three samples of this type, and it has a midstory of red alder, an understory of salmon, barrier, salmon berry, and scattered cascara buckthorn and elderberry. And we found this in terraces and mountain drainages adjacent to the coast. Five minutes left. Okay. Um, we're, we have a new association within the Big Leaf Maple Red Alder Alliance. Um, this has an understory of salmonberry and skunk cabbage and sluice edge. Um, sometimes uh, it co-dominates with um, Fraxinus latifolia. Um, there's a picture of just the Alnus rubra um, overstory association. And then we also have a new fen type. I should mention that these alliances have been described within the broader national world, like in the National Vegetation Classification, but they're new for the state of California. Um, five plots of this coastal fen have been identified. Groundwater obviously must be present um, for this type. We find it in dune deflation basins and in stabilized dunes, um, but we're also seeing it in the coastal mountains as well, so it's not just restrained to the coast. Characteristic species are Sitka sedge, Cusick sedge, marsh sequifoil, and bog bean. Oh man, there's so many cool types. Um, there's a couple new um, manzanita types. I mean, the Arctostaphylus columbiana has already been identified as a provisional type um, in the Santa Cruz classification, but we have 11 new stands, so a range extension and more data there. And then also this new association with the rare Del Norte manzanita, it only occurs in Del Norte County. Um, so that's pretty exciting, along with Knight's Manzanita, which also has a limited distribution. Um, we're finding these in serpentine and ultramafic soils in the North Coast ranges. Okay. Um, I have five minutes to go through the Modoc Plateau. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, so the Modoc Plateau and Northwestern Basin and Range ecoregions are characterized by deep basalt flows and ash and pumice deposits. It's a cold desert with an elevation range of 4,000 to almost 10,000 feet. Precipitation is only about 11 to 40 inches a year. Um, these ecosystems have been considered among the most threatened in North America. I'm going to skip to the vegetation types so that you get the meat of this talk. Um, but I will just say that um, it's characterized by sagebrush, and there's a, many sagebrush-dependent wildlife, such as sage grouse and pygmy rabbit. We prioritized this area in 2015 for classification and mapping. 2.3 millions of the region um, remained in 2021, and that's why we decided to focus on this area um, for continued sampling and mapping. We're working with Chico State to, we worked with Chico State to gather 500 additional surveys. And we're expecting to complete the updated classification and mapping in 2026. We're going to be focusing on vegetation types that have been identified in the Warner Mountains. Um, they run north-south, and their highest elevation is Eagle Peak, 9,894 feet. This, the geology here is volcanic in nature as well. All right, um, we have identified stands of western white pine. They're commonly found in northern, uh, the northern Warner Mountains. Um, it's known, this alliance is known in the Sierra Nevada. However, in the Warner Mountains, it's found co-dominating with white fir. And the Sierra Nevada is typically found with red fir, but there's no red fir in the Warner Mountains. So this is a, a unique combination and a new association for California's classification. Another important vegetation type is white bark pine stands. This is a known alliance, but we have three new locations for this sensitive natural community. Um, aren't these pretty photos? Jamie did an amazing job with these photos. Um, well, the Warner Mountains have their fair share of large stands of sagebrush, but on the windswept ridges and summits, we find a low sagebrush association that is characterized by shallow rocky soils and associated species such as Stenotus acolis. Um, it usually occurs with Phlox de glacii and Draba densifolia. 
this vegetation type is known in the Sierra Nevada, um, but we might have a new association within the Warner Mountains. We also have alpine and subalpine vegetation types, um, such as these stands of rayless golden bush with Davidson's penstemon. Uh, we find these in shaded areas with persistent snow patches. Um, this is going to be a range expansion of the Ericomeria discoidea, discoidea holcia algida alliance um, found in the Sierra Nevada. Another alpine vegetation type that we have seen in the Warner Mountains is Mountain Sorrel Alliance, which is currently a provisional alliance, meaning we don't have a lot of data for the type. In the Warners, uh, we see more Mountain Sorrel with Fremont's, Fremont's groundsel and Heart Willow weed. Um, this additional data will help us determine how to treat this provisional alliance in our hierarchical vegetation classification. Great. Um, between these two projects, the North Coast and the MODOC, we've added over 3,100 rapid assessment and releve surveys to inform our state's vegetation classification, and we've added over, we'll be adding over 5 million acres of fine scale mapping. I'm not sure if that includes the new RFP or not even. Um, this is getting us another step closer to completing our goal of getting the entire state classified and mapped. Thank you, and we have time for questions. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't talk too fast. Hi, Betsy. Um, I have a quick question about, maybe it would have been a better question for the previous speaker, but you're um, looking at like these alliances, like Pinus meticula with Aves concola or understory, and do you foresee in the future having um, a description of what these are going to succeed into eventually, because that will eventually become a overstory of white fir and we'll probably likely never have that um, Pinus menticula in the understory because it's okay, needs well, disturbance. I can already tell you know more about the Modoc vegetation than I because I'm, <laughs> but. Well, um, yeah, the, just the, is there going to be a discussion of succession? In there this? typically is a discussion of several states in the uh, MCV online. We'll talk about those things, but um, Rochelle, do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, yeah. So we might capture serial states at the association level, if that helps. Yeah. I wish I could speak more to the ABS Concolor part. If Jamie were here, she could. I have a question about uh, the situation that uh, large areas of California have regarding. Uh, private lands with uh, no trespassing signs, and some of those are pretty large areas. Mm -hmm. How do you handle the situation where there's large areas where you can't do the fine level sampling that needs to be done to really characterize the vegetation? So we do um, have quite a bit of effort to get on large private lands for sampling, and we've been able to do that in a lot of our project areas, but I foresee it you know, being as an issue as we get into these more privately owned areas. Um, the classification is a work in progress. If there's information that could be, we do have like an ability to share samples using our standard protocol from other folks that could be shared, but um, you know, it's gonna continue to be an issue, and if there is the ability to visit these areas, then we can beef up our classification. But I'm hoping at least um, a majority of our alliances and association can be characterized as a result of this sampling effort. Yeah, okay. I know that's not very satisfactory, but if you know about vegetation types you wanna share with us on private land, please let me know. <laughs> I, I would like to just oh. put in a little addendum onto Please. what you said, Betsy. Um, Thanks, it, it is true that there's a lot of private land that's more difficult to sample, but uh, realistically speaking, these are vegetation types which have repeating patterns. They're selected for sampling in many cases through a GIS uh, sort of uh, driving variable analysis where we try to get 
the various vegetation on substrate types and slope exposure types and distance from coast to inland, all of these environmental gradients are represented. Therefore, we're, we're hopeful at least that the sample that we get is representative of broader than just the physical locations yeah. that we sample. In other words, they're representative of repeating patterns that will be on private land as well as public land. Exactly. We have like a provisional association that has three samples, say, you know, we, thank you, Todd. Yeah, we are definitely classifying repeating patterns, so hopefully we're catching it elsewhere. <laughs>